Okay, now that we have solved our problem, let's try to refactor this code a little bit. This is what my student has, and I think it's really messy code. I really don't like it. It's very long. I mean, if you're my student, it's very good. As long as you have code that works, it's already very good. However, I think this code could be way better. You see, what this code is, this is what we call spaghetti code. Spaghetti code is code where you have lots of little things. It, yeah, it means spaghetti code is a phrase for unstructured and difficult to maintain source code because it's like a, a bowl of spaghetti. Imagine you have lots of spaghettis, you have lots of noodles going, you know, there's no structure. So the, for me, this is basically what this is. So first of all, let's remove the comments. If you are a good programmer, you do not need any comments. Okay, so you see we have lots of let, 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 let. So we, all of these variables are global variables, and I don't like this. Global variables means every function here on this page can change, for example, the total quantity. So now if your total quantity has a wrong number, you have no idea where the problem comes from. You don't know which function changed it. So we're going to create lots of smaller functions instead. So what could we do here? Totals, okay, so show items in page. So we have a big, big loop, okay. Let cart items, so first of all, this here, this let should be a const because this cart items will not be reassigned. So always use const when possible. Then, uh, do we really need this const to be declared inside the loop? Because this is not going to change. Every time you loop over an element here, this cart items doesn't change and you don't need to define it again. So I would take this out of the loop there. That's a bit better. Uh, okay, const article equals create article. Okay, so you see here, if cart items equal null return, if cart i equals null return, um, it's always good to handle the exceptions at the beginning of the function. It's, you know, you say, if there's any problem, return. And return means you stop the function and everything stops. It's way better to do it this way than the other way. Imagine I, if I wanted to do... Uh, Many of the you maybe you want to do if cart items is different from null, and then you have this, and then this goes all the way to the bottom of the function, you know, of the page, and then you do uh, else something. You know, this is very hard to maintain. I really don't like this. So the best way is to handle the exceptions at the very beginning. So you say if the cart items is null. Oh, sorry, I wanted to type up. Exclamation point. That's all. Yeah, if cart item is null, return. And now you know that if you go, if the line that comes after this, so for example, if I do a console log here, I can type cart items is not null. Because starting from this line, I know that the cart items is not null. Because if it were null, then the function would have stopped. The function did not stop, so that means that we know for sure that the cart items is not null. Okay. Cart i is equal null. This means when you loop, you want to make sure that the item that you get from the local storage is not null. Why would it be null? It's only null if you put null in there, so there's no reason to put this kind of check here. I would remove it. Okay. This is done. Okay. Um, cart items. Okay. By the way, this check also, if cart items is, is null return, cart items does not change, you see? We defined it here, but every time you loop on it, imagine we have 10 sofas, this means that this line is going to be executed 10 times, which is stupid. You only need it, you only need it to be executed once. So this would go out of the loop again. There. I think it's better this way. Okay. Const delete button equals article dot query selector delete item and then add the event listener on it. That's fine. I would make this inside a function. So I would say create make delete button. And I would just take here all of this and put it here. And so first of all, it needs an article. So you would need to pass it an article. So, oops, sorry. Wait, wait. Yeah. So const delete button is going to be make delete button, okay? But then you see it requires an article. 
So I would take this article and pass it to the function here. And then, of course, you need to tell the function that it can receive an argument. Or else, you see, I have an error message here. Expected zero arguments, but got one. Yeah. So here, let's, let me put this here. OK, we're good. Uh, oh, then we need to create the yeah, delete button again here. Delete button is going to be article that query selector delete item delete button. Uh, oh wait, the delete button. Oh, you don't really make it because it already exists. Um, so maybe make delete button is not good. Uh, and you do not need a return value, so you you do not need this const delete button here. Okay. Um, I would not call it make delete button. Maybe I would call it um, handle update, you know, delete button. Uh, yeah, okay, make delete button. Okay, that's fine. Listen. Delete item, add event listener. Uh, maybe make delete button clickable, maybe. Uh, okay. Make delete function, maybe. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's how it make delete function. I'm going to hit F2 there, and I'm going to change the button to function. And now it changed it everywhere. Okay, so now this function now could be put at the bottom of the doc of the document, and then we forget it. Okay, there we put it here, and now our code is a bit shorter here. Okay, so this is good. Total. So what is item quantity value? Okay, it was the okay, it was here. You see, item quantity value, I have no idea what this means. This is a very poor choice of a name. Document.querySelector input name item quantity. Let selected quantity in product. Oh my god. Oh my god, what is that? Okay, you know what? I'm just going to console log all of this. Um, I'm going to do this, this, and this. Okay. Okay, so I was on, which page was I on? The cart. Okay, so let me choose one item here. And oh no, I, I think yeah. Wait, if I go to my cart, I already have a something in my cart. Yeah, good. Let's look at my console. Okay, so cart is an array four. Item quantity value is a node list. It's this. Oh, okay. So that's the quantity. Okay, I see. Item quantity value. Oh my god, that is a very poor ch choice of name. Okay. Selected quantity in product. What is that? Okay. Selected quantity in product is cart i dot selected quantity. Okay. Price product is 3199. Okay, so I, I understand that. Something I don't like is you see this girl, what she did, she did a document dot query selector all. So she's looking at all the inputs in her item quantity value. So if I look at item quantity value, wait, oh no. So we have a node list because it's like an array, but with only one element there. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, here. Okay. And this one here. Okay. Oh, wait. So she loops inside the loop. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's bad. Okay. Okay. So we have this one, two, three, four. Okay. It's really bad. Why would you loop over the loop? You, you don't need a query selector all. You just need one, first of all. And you want... Okay. We're trying to understand what is the value here inside this here but that's not what we want exactly because we have we already in the cart here we already know the, the the selected quantity here what we want to do is for each item we just want to take this number here and replace it by the selected quantity so first of all yeah we don't need the query selector at all so first of all i'm just going because we're still looping now so I'm going to remove the okay query selector. Now we just have one. Okay. I so item quantity value. Yeah, and we don't need 
yeah, we don't need it here. I'm just going to remove it here. And I'm going to declare it here. Const item quantity value equals document dot query selector input name equals item quantity. Okay. Good. Now selected quantity in product equals okay. She's taking the selected quantity from the item here and then she's making it into a number. I don't see why you would do that because it's already supposed to be a number. When you save it, as far as I remember, when you save it, let me see, quantity number, we already made it a number when we saved it. So it's all it's always going to be a number. So you would not need to do this. Okay. Uh, so this would just be uh, cart i dot selected quantity. Okay. I don't know why you need to put this in a variable, but okay. And then price product equals same thing. You don't need number. Okay. Okay. Uh, my God, that's complicated. Listen, we only have we here we have item quantity value equals document dot query selector input. So that this is the input here. Imagine. I just want this here, so this item quantity value. You know what? I'm just going to call it uh, quantity input. Good. Let's call it this way. Quantity input, and I'm just going to change the value, for example, to one to three. Let's see what happens now. Good. You see now the quantity here is one to three. Now we don't want this to be one, two, three. We want this to be selected quantity. So this is going to be uh yeah, cart i dot selected quantity. And this can go away. Good. Okay, great. So now if I go to my application and I take the first one and I change the change the yeah, change the quantity to here this one. I'm going to take the last one here. Selected quantity, I'm going to put it, I'm going to make it four, five, six. Good. Oh, fuck. It's a string again. Uh, oh, yeah, because I changed it in the. Uh, okay, you know what? Never mind. I'm going to remove it. Okay. I'm going to go back here. Home. And I'm going to choose another one, like this red one. And I'm going to change the quantity to 11. I add it. So now here, it, it's supposed to be 11, not as a string, but as a number. Good. Here, the selected quantity is 11. Good. So now if I go in my cart, where is it? Come on, refresh. Okay, that's weird. We only have one. Why do we only have one? Cart.html. Let's look at the console. Do we have any issues? Selected quantity in product is not defined on line 31. Line 31. Oh, yeah, there it is. Uh, yeah, we're going to comment all of this. Oh, my God. What the hell is this? Holy shit. Um... Okay, I'm going to comment all of this. Okay. Let's try this. Unexpected end of input line 170. Oh. Uh, wait. Maybe this. Okay, this is better. So you see, okay. So I was able to put this 11 here. Okay, great. What the only thing we did is, yeah. Const quantity input equals document dot query selector. Uh -huh. Quantity input dot value equals cart i dot selected quantity. Yeah. So maybe this could go inside um, a function as well. 
what do we want? We want the price, the quantity. Do we need anything else? Uh, do we need a total somewhere? I don't think we need a total anywhere. No, we don't need a we don't need a subtotal. Okay, good. So well, the only thing we need to uh, okay to put is the quantity. So maybe we could just call it uh, mm -hmm, update quantity. So maybe quantity input equals document dot query selector. So maybe yeah we could put this inside a function. Let's call it uh, function update quantity. No. Uh, yeah. Let's do it this way. And update quantity is going to require the cart i. Okay, it's going to require the sofa. You know what? I don't like this cart i. I'm just going to remove this loop here. I don't like it. Let I don't like to use work with i and all. I'm just going to call it const uh, sofa in cart. So now every item in the sofa in the cart is called a sofa. And so every time I have cart i, I'm going to put sofa instead. And so here, this is going to be these both these things are going to be sofa. So let's call update quantity and we need to pass it sofa because we need it here inside. So let's put the sofa here. Good. And now we're going to take this and throw it to the bottom of the file. Yeah, all the way there. Good. Mm hmm. Okay, totals goes away. Let price product equals sofa dot price. Okay. I don't see why you need it. Okay, what about the total? The total is here. Okay. Oh wait, we have something undefined there. Okay, so we broke something. Let's see what we broke. Let's look at this. Mm -hmm. See, so it was not able to find the data ID and the color undefined. Everything is undefined here. Let's look at the console. Hmm, weird. Let's refresh this. Impossible to get the image. Okay, it's trying to get the image, but everything is undefined. Okay. The cart is fine. So let's see what the problem is. Const sofa in cart create article. Okay, so, so the create article worked. Uh, okay, make delete function. Okay. Update quantity. What is it? Sofa. Okay.
So this is line is unnecessary, so I would remove it, and then this way. So maybe the whole function is useless. Okay. Update. So where is it? It's here. So maybe yeah, this is useless. Uh, oh, but we still have to call render or render item quantity. Okay. Update total price. Okay. The total price. Okay, it's plus equal. That's weird. Oh, okay. No, that's the total price. Ah, okay. Yeah, the total price is a bit weird. It should not be plus equal. The to oh, the, that's the total price of an item. Oh, fuck. Sorry, I got lost. Yeah, but do we need it? No, we don't need it. No, it's okay. So the total price is the total price of everything. So total price, I guess, is going to be... We're going to have to loop over the cart, I guess. So I would say, if you want to update the total price, you would have to loop over the cart. So you would do for const sofa of cart, uh, let total equals zero, and then you would do total plus equal sofa dot price times sofa dot selected quantity. Okay. And then render the total price by passing yeah, the total, like this. And what does this render total price do? This render total price takes the, okay, the number that it gets and puts it here inside. Okay, good. What about the total quantity? So the total quantity, okay. Total, okay, at first it's zero, and then for every element of the cart, it's going to update. Mm -hmm. It's going to, okay, to update the total quantity by putting plus equals so far dot selected quantity. Okay, and then render this total quantity by okay it's so going to receive a number and it's going to put it inside the inner html of the of this total quantity okay oh and then maybe yeah this update should be render sorry okay let's see if this works we have 14 articles okay looks good to me plus one. Oh shit Okay, so what is the function that is touching this? It's total quantity, okay. Who is touching total quantity? It's render total quantity with the total, okay. So let's log the total here. Let's see what happens when we log the total. Okay, 14. Okay, now total is 132, which is not normal. Okay, so who calls render total quantity? It's this guy. Okay, total quantity equals zero. Cart for each sofa. Total quantity plus equal sofa dot selected quantity. For each sofa. Let's log the sofa dot selected quantity and let's see what happens. So far, so we have two sofas with one, one sofa was 11, one sofa was one, which is what we have here. Okay, so the update quantity is fine for me, I think it's fine. The problem is when we click. So I think the problem is the listener. So listen to quantity change. I think it's this one that has a problem. So article.query selector item quantity add event listener change E. 
sofa.selected quantity becomes e.target.value. Okay. And then let's console log the sofa then here. And let's see what it gives. So we have quantity of one. Let's update it. It becomes selected quantity. Ah, there we go. You see? Yes, this comes from the HTML. So it's not an it's not a number. It's a string. So that's why this 132. Okay, I I get it. It's because it's a string. So maybe it should be number e dot target dot value. Let's try this again. Good. Okay. It's better this way. Okay, good. Okay, looks good to me. We can remove the console logs. We have lots of console logs here. Let's remove them. Console. Okay, this one goes away. Oh, and the delete button, yeah, it's not doing anything yet, by the way. Okay. Okay, I think we're fine. Mm -hmm. So now if I do plus one, okay, we're good. Okay, what about this? Okay, looks good to me. Is the total okay? Yeah, looks good to me. Okay, good. So we're fine. Uh, what else did we want to do? Okay, let's keep refactoring. Order sofa. First name equals blah blah blah. City error message. Check input city. Why do you need? Why is she doing a random number here? You don't need a random number. Sofas confirmed equals cart. So you're just renaming cart. Okay. Ooh. Um. Okay, order sofa. First of all, all of this should be inside a function. Because you cannot have so many global variables, it's really bad. So what I would do is, okay, do we have an event listener somewhere? Okay, document dot get element by id order add event listener click event, okay, event dot prevent default, um, okay, why not? Let contact equals order number first name value blah 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 so plus confirmed local storage. Mm. Mm hmm. Why contact? Why does she require? Okay, she is storing. She is storing something in the local storage, but we don't need to store anything inside the local storage. So yeah, when you order something, it just goes to the server, and the server replies something. You don't need any and any anything in the local storage. So this goes away. And so, therefore, this goes away as well. We don't need it. Okay. Uh, if we want to take this, so all of this should go inside the function. Where is it? Here. Good. Uh, event dot prevent default. I don't see why you need this. Let's remove it. If you click order, oh, it brings you to the confirmation, which is what you wanted anyway. So, yeah, for me, you don't need it. Okay, I would just remove it. Okay, const first name equals document dot get element by id first name. Okay. Uh, first name error message, no numbers. Yeah, so I just uh, checked the specs, and yeah, there's no local storage required. You see, uh, here's the specs. 
when you need to uh, post uh, the order here you just have uh, yeah you just need to post you just need to make an HTTP request to the order uh, endpoint and pass an object uh, a JSON so yeah we're not going to need that uh, what we do need however is uh, yeah so what happens when you click on the order button const first name equals document dot get element by id first name okay uh well this is not going to work look if i put my first name a ben here and then if i look at if i do this here document dot get element by id first name you see i get the whole object if i want the value i need to do value here and then i get the, the name Ben here. So here, first name is going to be da -da 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 dot value. Same for last name here, it's going to be value. And same for address, it's going to be value. Uh, same for city and email. So city dot value and email dot value. So actually, all these things could go together. So I would do this, last name, address, city, and email. I would do something like this. Um, yeah, that's one way to do it. It's not the cleanest way, but I, I would do it differently. I would refactor a little bit, but you know what? Let's keep it this way. Okay. Uh, and then, oh, same for the error messages. Okay, let's put this address is going to be here. City error message. And then email error message. Okay. Good. What are these? No numbers. It's a regex. Okay. I don't think you need a regex, but okay. Check input. First name no numbers first name error message okay that's good check input city no numbers city error message email regex okay hmm uh what can we do okay you have a function that is check input where is it it's here name regex error message okay so you don't need a comment here. If you need a comment, it means your function is not clear enough. So if you don't know what reg is, well, just type it regex, maybe. And every time you see reg, well, you put regex inst instead. Uh, same for this error. Uh, maybe just call it maybe uh, error message. Now you don't need the comment here. OK. So name, I don't like name. Uh, I would call it maybe a uh, element because it's an it's an html element okay so element dot add event listener change and when there is a change okay uh if the regex doesn't match the element dot value Oh, okay, so we didn't need to add value over there. Okay, great, so I'm going to remove it. Good, okay. So, if it's not good, we have an error message which says, please add correct data. If not, you have an error message which is empty. What is the point of adding an error message which is empty? I don't understand. You don't need this else whatsoever. Okay, so, if regex dot test element dot value error message dot inner html equals please add please add correct data okay why not the order i don't know why she has an order where did she use did she use an order somewhere let me see oh document dot get element by id order yeah you don't need that at all yeah, and sofas confirmed. What is that? Yeah, you have it nowhere, so you can just delete it. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, th this is going to go away. Okay. Okay, we have a function, check input. I'm going to put it lower just so it's clearer. Okay, let's put it here. So, get element by ID order, and we have an add event listener click. When you click on it, you retrieve the first name, the last name, the address, the city, the email. And, okay, we have const first name error message equals, okay, first name error message, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a strange for me to check the input when you order. For me, you should not check the input when you order. You should check the input when you type. So what I would do is what I would do is for each of these things, I would add an event listener. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would take these things and take them out of the function again. So sorry. And I would create an array like this with first name, last name, address, city, email, and for each, and for each of these elements, let's call them elements, I would do, I would put an element dot add event listener, and when there's a change, when there's a change, then I would do a check input of this element with a special regex and an error message. Um, let me put a comma here. Okay. For each element, uh, we have check input with the element. What is the regex? Is there a regex for one of them? Oh, no numbers. Okay, so that's the that's the regex. Um. Okay, check input. Okay, so let's put this no numbers regex. Oh, wait. Hmm. Oh, yeah, but you have a different regex depending on... Uh, okay. So we would have to... Uh, okay. Okay, we, we, the regex is going to be different depending on... Uh, okay. Const regex equals... Uh, choose regex like this and pass the element. Uh, so let's have a function here which says function choose regex starting with an element or just let's call it element. And let's say if element is equal to first name or last name or address or city. You know, okay, well, okay, we have an email regex here. Okay, good. Sorry, let, sorry, let's do it here. Where was I? Sorry, I lost it. Where was I? Okay, yeah, here. Choose regex. So we have an email regex, which is here. We have a no numbers regex, which we're going to put here. Okay. And let's say, well, uh, if the element is the email, so if element is equal to email, then return email reg, else return no numbers. Okay. So now we have a regex. So it's going to look at yeah, if element equals email, does it have access to email? Yeah, it's here. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. So okay. If so now we have a regex, that's fine. What about the error message? Yeah, the error message is going to be the same. Um 
you know what? The error message is going to come with. Uh, we're going to. It's going to come with. Um, it, it's. Yeah, the regex and the messages are going to come at the same time. They're going to come together. So what could we do? Uh, let's put our message here. Maybe we could put. Um, oh yeah, you also have cons no special characters. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, this one's better. No special characters. Yeah. Let's let's take this one. Yeah, no special characters is better. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, we could also have an a message. So maybe const email message is going to be well. Uh, please add correct email. And const no special characters message is going to be please. Uh, yeah, maybe no special characters allowed. And what we can do is if the element is email, we're going to return an array with the email reg regex and the email message. And if not, we're going to remove we're going to add the array with the no special characters regex and the no special characters message. So now here when we get an array here so maybe array like this we're going to start here in an array and we can say our regex is equal to array zero and our error message is equal to array one and this is okay and it's going to be the same thing that's fine we can even make it a little bit uh, nicer we don't even need to, all these three lines, I would put them in only one. You could also just do it this way. You could say er, uh, regex error message equals choose regex element. That also works. Uh, what I just did here, this is called destructuring. You can Google it later. Destructuring. Okay, so what happens with the check input? So every time one of these elements changes, then the check input will be triggered. And the check input is going to... Uh, oh wait, we have an event listener inside the event listener? Wait. What is that? Okay. So each one of these, when any one of these items changes, check input is launched. So check input does not need an event listener. Yeah, it doesn't need an event listener. All it does is if there's an error message, so, sorry, wait, no error message. Okay, if the regex doesn't test, well, error message dot inner html equals error message okay let's see if this works so let's go there let's put one two three doesn't work okay it doesn't work so let's look at our event listeners here event check input oh okay we have a few problems here what is no numbers choose regex check input oh yeah because we have all of this twice okay yeah okay so we can remove yeah okay all of this was in the order yeah, sorry, we, we can remove this. That's the order. We don't care about the order. So we wanted first name, last name for each element, element at event listener change. Okay. And let's say that when there's a change, 
uh, I just want to console.log the element that changed. Uh, elements, you know what, I'm going to put the event here and we're going to take the e.target.value and see if we have an event listener. Okay, so you see nothing is triggering. That's weird. Uh, okay. Let's try to copy this. So let's do this. Copy here. Okay. Identifier first name has already been declared. Oh, okay, okay, so that's good. Let's copy this here. Let's see what happens. Nope, doesn't work. Why not? Element that add event listener. Okay, so let's take the first one. First name dot add event listener change console dot log. Okay, so this doesn't work. See, I think it change doesn't work. I think it works when you hover out. Yeah, okay. So maybe change is not the one that we want. Maybe we want, we don't want change. So let's look at event listeners types uh, and maybe we can find something a bit better. What I like, uh, we could use one which is called key down or key up. You see we have keyboard events here. We have key down, key press or key up. Usually you will, maybe you want to put key down but the problem is if you put key down uh, and the people the, the people keep their finger on the on the key well maybe it's going to trigger lots of events so usually it's better to uh, listen to the key up when they remove their finger from the keyboard so instead of change let's call it key up and let's see what we have okay what happens if I do this okay Great. Ben, wa, okay, good. What happens if I put one, two, three? Hmm. Okay, so the event listeners work, but the check input doesn't. Okay, what is the issue? Const regex equal error message, choose regex, okay. Maybe we could, uh, okay. Let's console log this. So I'm going to put A and the regex error message. This is going to be okay. And this is going to be the no special characters allowed. Okay. What about this? The regex error message looks so a different regex and a different error message. Okay. So this is fine. Check input. So where's the check input? So I don't think it's regex.test. Okay. Let me see. Um, so this is a regex here. Let's call it const reg is equal to new reg xp and we're going to pass it this now let's we have test ben true okay ben one true okay oh because numbers are oh because numbers are fine okay oh but we didn't want numbers okay so maybe uh yeah let's remove the numbers from here oh wait maybe address could have number Okay, the address could have a number. Okay, let's keep the numbers. Okay, let's make it Ben plus false. Okay. So if regex.test element.value, okay, let's console log the element here. Done. Okay, the element is good. Okay, let's log the element.value. 
So A, B, C, okay. A, V, E is the elements A, V, E, okay, that's fine. Error message, okay. Oh, error message dot inner HTML. Okay, so that's the problem. Okay, 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 I see. Yeah, the error message should be, um, yeah, okay, I guess. We, yeah, we need to pass the good, um, okay, we need to pass, yeah. Yeah, maybe we could pass also, um, mm-hmm. Yeah, we we need to pass the um, the element where the error message uh, gets triggered or get, gets uh, gets displayed. So here maybe we could add one argument, which could be the um, how could we call it the error uh, error span maybe. This is where the message will have to be displayed. And what what is this error span? Uh, well, I guess we can make it a function get error span based on the element here. And this function get error span is going to take an element. And so uh, let me see if element is equal to first name well return document dot get element by id first name error yeah let's see yeah first name error message okay the other one is last name error message address error message city error message, email error message, and that's all. Okay, first name error message, MSG, wait, forgot already. Error message, okay. Okay, now let's copy this a few times. If element equals last name okay then we wanted address oops sorry sorry wait okay address then we have city no. error message and then we had finally email I'm sorry, email like this. And finally, uh, if there's any other problem, we should throw new error, uh, no error message, fine. No, uh, n no, uh, no error, no HTML element found for error message, okay. Good. So now const error span is going to be the result of get error span. And then let's say that this check input can also receive yeah, the error span. And the span, yeah, the error span will have an inner HTML of error message. I don't like inner HTML, maybe inner text is fine, it's good enough. Let's see what happens now. Okay, no error, that's good. Let's see. Okay, good. Ah, okay. But it, then it doesn't go away. Oh, okay. So that's why you had else, okay. So, sorry, my bad. You, okay, if regex, Test element value. Okay, 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 okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. Else error span dot inner text equals nothing. Okay. So now 
nothing good if i remove it it's good uh, uh, okay uh, 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 good email add correct email okay this should be fine what's the problem okay we have a problem here with the email what is the regex for the email Okay, let's copy this, paste it here, email reg dot test this, false. Okay, that's wrong. Okay, we have a problem with this regex. Uh, regex for email. Yeah, okay, this one is good. Let's try this one. Yeah, const regex equal new reg xp like this don't forget the slash here and the slash there regex dot test true yeah okay so let's take this regex it looks better let's copy it here and mm -mm. Okay, looks good to me. Now the email, not good. But if I put add uh, dot, okay, now we're good. Okay, perfect. Okay, we're good. Uh, what else? Yeah, we could refactor a little bit. Here you see, uh, we have, yeah, this if else could be better. We could do this in one one line only. We could say error span dot inner text equals so is regex uh, okay. Does the element value test the regex? If yes, we say nothing. If not, error message. Okay, good. Now this should still work the same way. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, good. Problem is as soon as I hope as soon as I get on the email, I have the um, I have this error, which is strange because I don't have the problem on the city, but for the email as soon as I hope as I focus, then I have the error message, which is weird. What's wrong with the email? Oh, it's a different regex. Okay. So what is this regex? No special characters. New regex P. Oh, yeah, be careful. Uh, your regex should not have the double quote. It should be slash like this. It should be better. Yeah, you see, now it works. Uh huh. Okay, good, good. Oh no, wait, it's still. Uh huh. Okay. So. Okay, that's weird, but it's okay. Let's let's keep it this way. It's not a big problem. Okay. Now, what do we want to do? Okay. So first of all, when you order. Uh huh. Uh, when you click the order, we want to make sure that this doesn't work if any one of these things has a problem. Okay. So choose regex. Okay. Get error span. Check input. Okay. What I would do exceptionally, I would create. Um, I would create a global variable here called let is form valid. And at first we're going to say it's false. But then every time that we check the input, okay, check input, where is it? Okay, 
airspan okay mm -hmm. and we're gonna say every time the check input is called I want some kind of verification um, how could we do this yeah sorry no you know what I'm gonna do sorry I'm going to remove this is form valid sorry about that um, I think what I want to do is when I click the order button I want all of this function to be run again so maybe I'm going to put this inside a function here uh, and maybe this function I may maybe I'm going to call it uh, let me see this check input error span you see it's not really called check input this check input could be, just be called maybe a display error message this yeah show error message this okay that's better um do we need element yes do we need regex yes do we need error message yes do we need error span yes okay this is show error message so maybe all of this show error message so choose regex error span yeah maybe all of these three lines here we could put them inside a function again let's call this function check input and we're going to move these three lines inside here good so now here we're going to do check input with uh oh yeah e dot target yeah yeah because e dot target is the element that was uh that is uh that has changed okay so check input is going to take an element okay that's good and i think that's fine okay i think this is good and now what we want to do is check input okay so what we want to do is when we click the order button where is it here okay what we want to do is we want to get all the fields and check them again so maybe these fields here or first name last name address city email maybe i could put them in an array called fields um, yeah maybe yeah i'm going to do this const fields equal first name blah 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 okay and now fields for each yeah maybe this is better okay and now when i order i want to check again so fields dot for each uh for each field or yeah or maybe for each element it's the same let's check it again let's check input element but then if any one of them if any one of them uh is not uh doesn't pass the validation then we want we just want to do nothing uh, what do we do here where is it you know what we could do we could use uh -huh, this check input here show error message once error span regex error message uh -huh. check input uh -huh. yeah you know what maybe we could do this maybe we could use a return value here we could return regex dot test element dot value so this will always return true or false this way when we use it here we can say const is form valid equals check input element yep that's good and mm, we could also do instead of for each mm -hmm. and let's say that let's we are going to use sum if if 
for if we have some fields for whom we have not form valid if is form valid you see mm. hmm yeah sorry const are all fields valid is equal to fields dot sum elements sorry sum you know what I'm just going to do check input like this so yeah so we're going to do sorry if I'm not very being, being very clear here I'm a bit tired so we're gonna do are all fields valid is going to be um, it's going to be the result of some fields return uh, sorry it's not going to be some it's going to be every okay it means for every field we have check input returns true and we ha we're going to see, yeah, so we're going to move uh, this here, okay, and we're going to remove this here, okay. And we're going to say, if not all fields are valid, then just do nothing. Events.prevent default and return. And or else, then we can pass the order here. So let's look at this. So, okay, sorry. Okay, we have this, we have this, we have this. Oh, it doesn't want my accent, okay. Huh, what's the problem? Oh, it doesn't want spaces. Okay, it doesn't want spaces. Okay, that's weird. No, the the regex should be able to take an a to take a space. Um. Okay. Okay. No special characters. Uh, I think the space. Okay. Regex space matching a space in regex. It's going to be space here. Okay, so let's accept spaces here. I added a space after the nine. Okay, good. So now the only issue is the e here, and we're good. Now, if one of these is not good, when I click, nothing happens. But if they're all good, then when I click, something happens. Okay. And last but not least, you were supposed to create, when you click post here, this it's supposed to, you were supposed to uh, send an HTTP request. So, if not all fields are valid, then event .prevent default. So, I mean, you know what? Just you don't even do need this. Uh, let's keep it. It's not a problem. Okay. But if not, well, we're going to have to create an order and send it. So maybe let's have a function. Let's create a function here. Maybe function send order. And let's call it here send order and you are going to need to pass um, well many things uh, you see I'm on the specs here and it says you need to post an order here 
So the JSON request containing, okay. So what is the address? Let me see, no, 3000, okay. That's the URL, okay. And okay, this is, let's try to post something here. Let URL equals HTTP dot uh, we want order the endpoint is order so let's call it order okay now let's do a fetch on this URL uh, and oh we need a body also so let's have a body which is equal to an empty object maybe or maybe a name uh, Ben wait what are we expecting contact and product table okay so contact is going to be uh, Ben and the uh, product is going to be uh, one, two, and three. This is our body. And now let's make a fetch to this URL and pass it our body. And let's do then console log catch console.error not found okay does this exist what was the address of this 3000 okay interesting why does it fail Oh, maybe it's not api.product slash order. I think it's just, so sorry, URL is going to be api slash order, I think. Wait, let me see. Get api, okay, let's try this. Nope, still not good. What if I remove this API here? Ah, no, not found. No, sorry. So I just looked into. Uh, yeah, I, I I had forgotten. Yeah, this is how you make a fetch method here. Let me let me paste it here. Localhost slash API products order. Yeah. So the body. Okay, you need method post. Yeah, I think we need that. Oh, and body. Okay, okay, that's how you needed it. JSON.stringify body. Okay, let's try this. Okay, bad request. Hmm. Bad request. So let's look at the network tab that we had here. Okay, this is the, the request that I sent, which was bad. Let's look at it. So it sent me a 400, so it understood it was a post, and it told me it didn't like it. Okay, let's look at the payload. Okay, so this is what I sent. So I guess, yeah, that's not good. I guess it was expecting another kind of uh, body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is not what the specs want. You see, the specs require uh, when you post... Yeah, they want a JSON request containing a contact object and a product table. So the contact should be an object and the product should be a table. So let's go there. Uh, and let's create our body again. So what is going to be our body? Okay, so this could be our body. JSON.stringify body. Uh, okay, where's our body? Okay, contact is going to be... So I retried again. So this is what I did. I did a fetch. I'm going to do it again here. Okay. Here's my body. My body now has a contact key. The contact is an object which contains first name, last name, address, city, email. Ben, Raj, somewhere, Paris, my email. And the product is just an array of one ID. And 
I took this from the local storage to make sure that to make sure that this uh, this thing exists. Uh, if I check this, yeah, let's let, let's get an ID from here. Okay, do we have an ID somewhere here? Yeah, this ID I know. That. Let's take it here. This way we're gonna make sure that it exists. Let's paste it here. Okay, now let's do our fetch, and it failed. Let's look at the network. Let's look at the order here. Preview response nothing headers. Mm -hmm, bad product. Uh, let me check again the payload. I have product with no S. Maybe that's the problem. Let me see. No, yeah, a product table. Okay. Uh, that's weird. I think it should be products with an S. I think the do I know their documentation is really bad, so that's not your fault. I know it's really tough, but uh, it, it, they did a shitty job. They should also show us the uh, error. The server should be able to tell us exactly what the problem is, but it doesn't. I think it's product with an S. Let's try it again. Ah, now it works. Okay, good. Let's look at the network. And this time, it's good. Perfect. You see, yeah, the documentation is bad, and, uh, the, and the specifications are bad. But anyway, so let's do that. Ah, <sighs> okay, so where were we? Uh, test, product, cart, was it cart? Yeah, okay, send order, okay. We want an order, so to make the order, we need to make a fetch, so. Yeah, oh, great, thank you. Const order, equal first name is going to be first name dot value, last name dot value, address dot value, city dot value, email dot value, okay, that's good. Uh, except uh, we're going to call this maybe body. This is going to be the body of the request. And it should have also uh, a key called um, contact. Yep, no cart here. And we also want uh, products which is going to be an array of something. Mm, the array will be, um, the array will be, uh, yeah, it, we're going to take it from the cart. Yeah, okay, it's uh, get IDs from cart. And then we're going to create a function here, get IDs from cart. So it's going to take the cart, and when it receives the cart, what is it going to do? Well, it's going to do, yep, const IDs is equal, is equal to an empty array. For every sofa in the cart, IDs.push sofa.id. The problem is the sofa.id here has a little issue you're going to see. Um, Look, I'm going to console log this, this sofa.id, and you're going to see the problem that we have. Um, you see, so now if I go there, let me fill in the details. I do order, and you see the sofa IDs. Oh, okay, no, they're good. Okay, good, good, good. Perfect. Okay, so that's good. Return IDs. Uh -huh. So there's a better way to do it, you know, but... Um... So if you like it, you could keep it this way. Uh, you could also do it another way. I like to do it in a bit in a shorter way. I use a map. So I do return cart.map. And instead of each sofa, I just want the sofa dot id and i think it's also the same uh if i do console log uh here i'm going to console log it here and see what it gives 
part. Okay. Now, if I do, let me order it. If I do this, yep, that's exactly what we wanted. Perfect. It's just a shorter way of using it. You can see the map function is a good function. Uh, I suggest you learn it. And okay, the products are here. Okay, so we have the body here. And now what do we want? Well, yeah, we're going to do local, so fetch, yeah, great. Local host 3000 slash API slash product slash order. Method post, headers, content type, application slash JSON. The body is going to be this body, but stringified because yeah, we only can send text over HTTP. Then response becomes a response.json. Then the data becomes console log data. Let's add a catch also. If there's a catch, uh, if there's any error, let's, let's maybe alert. Yeah, let's put an alert here. Okay. What's going to happen now? Let's do this. Order. Okay. And now the, the server responded here. Where is it? Sorry, go previous. Okay, let's order. And Sorry, I'm going to put preserve log here because it's erasing everything every time. So, okay, order. Okay, where is it? Here it is. The order, the response. No, where's the header? Sorry, it's this one. This one. Response. Nope, maybe this one. What the hell? That's options, that's not the one we want. Let's do it again. Order. Oh, wait, maybe I should have a preserved log. No, I should already have a preserved log. Oh, okay, so I just clicked and now, okay. I have the order ID here, okay. So the server is sent me back an order ID. Okay, good. So now the only thing I need to do is just to reroute, reroute the, the user to this order ID here. I think it's okay. Um, yeah, you need to go on the confirmation page. So once it's all done, instead of console log data, yeah, this, window.location.href is going to go here html slash confirmation dot html and oh yeah we have an order here it's called order id so let's call it const order id is equal to data dot order id and i think then you have to pass it in the confirmation dot html you have to pass it order ID equals order ID in the params. So let's do it. This way when you order, okay. You see, you just pass the order ID here in the URL. Can you see it? This way. So now when you are on this page, it's very easy, you just need to get this order number from the URL and you're good. Uh, the last thing we could do is when we finished, when we click all this, we could remove the cart. So we could say now the cart, okay, we could reset everything. Uh, so we could say maybe um, reset cart like this. And here's a function reset cart so it's going to take a cart um, I don't want to do this I don't like this 
that's not a very good way to uh, empty something uh, because you are reassigning something and that's not really good. I would rather do length equals zero. And also I would remove everything in the local storage like this. Local storage dot clear. Uh, one last thing, we didn't implement the delete method. The make delete function. Yeah, you see here we have a console log, you were deleting the item. So when we are here and we click delete, we are just we just have you are deleting this item. So if we are deleting this item, well, first of all, what should we do? Well, we should uh, well we should take the article and remove it. First of all, okay. Then we should also update uh, the quantity. So. Hmm. Maybe we could put, okay, maybe we could put uh, for this, um, for this element, um, maybe we could set, before removing it, maybe we could set the current sofa to zero, the, the, the current quantity to zero. Yeah, let's do that. Make the leak function only has the article but maybe we could pass it the sofa as well. So let's pass it the sofa. So here it's going to receive the sofa. And we say sofa dot uh, selected quantity is going to be zero. Then we could um, update. Yeah. Do we, yeah, we need to update the total price, I guess. Uh, let me see what we have here. Render item quantity, we don't need that. But up the, these two functions could be useful, so let's use them. So let's go to the make delete function and let's add this here. So selected quantity equals zero. Update total price is okay. I don't remember what this function does exactly, how it works, but I guess it's going to work because we coded things well. So let's do this. So we have one. So articles should go from 14 to 13 and 1000 euros should disappear. We should have 26, 6, 8, 7. Okay. Yep, it worked. 13 articles, 26, 6, 8, 7. Okay, we're good. If I do this again, 12 articles. I do this again, one article, if I do this again, zero articles. Okay, we're good. Perfect. So um, we're going to remove this console log. We're good. And now we could, this is still very long. Maybe we could, um, maybe we can refactor some things here. Uh, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. So maybe here i'm going to use some dom functions so uh, you know what maybe i'll have a file for everything that is related to the form so let's create here a file uh, let's i'm going to put it in a folder called dom and i'm going to call it maybe form.js and everything that is uh, yeah check input um yeah, all of this. Yeah, okay. Everything here is everything here is the form. So I'm going to take this, put it inside the form here. And I'm going to say I which elements I want to export. So I'm going to say export well uh, everything that we need. First name, last name, address, city, email. First name, last name, address, city, email. We also want fields. Oh, uh, do we need fields? Sorry, do we need first name, last name, address, city, email? Ah, I guess not. We only need fields, I guess. Do we? Wait. 
do we have fields here? Yeah, we do. Okay. Oh wait, but this is also this is also this could also go inside the um this could also go inside the form dot js. Yeah, let's do that. Great. So what do we need to export? What is required here? It says send order. Okay, it's looking for send order. So export send order. And then here we can import it. Import send order from slash dom slash form. Okay. Uh, before you do this, make sure that your cart.html yeah, this is not going to work. Uh, you need to add type. Yeah, if you try this, I think it's not going to work. You see, look, cannot use import statement outside a module. So you have to tell your script that it's a module like this. Now it should be fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. 404 not found. Oh, weird. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's continue. Uh, we were inside our cart. So, oh yeah, you see, so now we don't need, all of this is gray, so I guess we don't need it anymore. Uh, okay, we'll delete later. Uh, we have the form. So, okay, reset cart. Where is reset cart? Oh, it, it, requires, it needs it. Okay. Uh, yeah, it requires reset cart. Okay, so let's give it reset cart. Okay, let's take it here and bring it here. Okay, we're good. Uh -huh. is, oh, is everything good here? Show error message. Okay, so this is more going to be like... Uh, Okay, show error message. You know what? Yeah, let's let's take it as well. Let's bring it here. Okay. Everything looks good. Okay. What does cart require? What does cart require? Element uh -huh, order. Mm. get IDs from cart. When is this going to be useful? Oh, it's in the form.js as well. How come the form didn't tell me it needed it? Oh yeah, no, okay, it, it tells, told me here, okay. So, okay, let's take this and bring this here. Okay. So now we have a function create card, create article, make delete function, render item quantity, update total price, render total price, render total quantity, listen to quantity change. For me, all of these are DOM methods. So I would put all of this inside another folder. Yeah, I would inside the DOM, I would create maybe a cart DOM.js, paste everything here, and export. Oof, yep, all of this. Let's see what. Okay. Imports an order. Okay. Import everything here from DOM cart. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wait, no, this is not good. Yeah, you don't need. Where is this? Where was this defined? In cart DOM. So yeah, it's weird. Uh, yeah, all of this also is here good 
Okay, looks good to me. Uh, what about this uh, document that got element by ID order? Send order. Uh huh. Maybe all of this could go inside a function also. Maybe called uh, listen to order button. Yeah, let's yeah let's like do it like this. Function listen to order button like this and this goes here and then show items in page and then let's call it listen to order button okay and then maybe this can go somewhere else maybe uh, in the cart dom here and Let's make sure that it's listen to order button. Uh, oh, send order. It does not find send order. That's too bad. Where is send order? Did we have? Uh, oh, yeah. Well, first of all, we need to import listen to order button. OK. Where was send order? Send order is inside form.js. Okay. So in this case, yeah, this send order, we don't need it here. We're going to say so this send order should be imported here. Import send order from not cart API form okay good okay this is my cart do i really need item quantity delete items total price mm, i don't see them here delete items yeah num to delete no item quantity no uh total price do we need it let me comment it and let's see if it works oh cart dom huh doesn't find it uh maybe you need to when you import it you need to add the dot js i think that's it form dot js i'll say the same thing cartdom.js okay we'll import from the form form from js cart.js will import from cartdom.js okay create article is not defined in line 20 create article okay where is create article it should come from the cart dom Is it good? Okay, cart is not defined in cart dom js line fifty. Line fifty. Oh yeah, it doesn't know cart. So maybe we should say that it is going to receive cart then. When we call whoever calls it is going to give it the cart. So where is update total price? It's in the cart.js here. And let's say we're going to pass it the cart like this. OK. Now it should work. OK, OK. Mm -hmm. mm, let me make sure when we delete something, does it does it go away? doesn't work cart is not iterable cart dom 50 cart dom 50 for const sofa of cart okay so whoever called update total price did the second argument should have been cart uh, oh there it is yeah sofa and then it should also pass cart okay Okay, 
let's try again reload let's click delete cart is not iterable line 50 cart dom line 50 const sofa of cart okay well let's console log this cart what happens when I click delete it's undefined okay why is it undefined who called the update total price oh there okay it should have cart in second argument okay uh, what about this make delete function who called it okay do we have a cart somewhere here? Okay, let's see if it works. Let's click delete. Cart is not defined. Okay, so whoever called line 37, this cart is not defined. Okay, so whoever calls make delete function should also pass the cart so now every time we have a make delete function the third argument should be the cart okay good and we have a cart here yes okay let's try this delete okay looks good to me what about the application it's still here so when we delete something, we should also delete it from the local storage. Make delete function. So when we when we delete something, the sofa becomes selected quantity zero. Update total price. Sofa cart update total quantity article remove. Okay, but then we should also remove it from the local storage. So. I would go to local storage dot get item and what is going to be the key well the key is going to be the id colon the color so const key is going to be well it's going to be the sofa dot id colon sofa dot selected color do we have it here colors selected color and id oh but we already have the id here oh wait no wait sorry the key yes yeah, sorry that's inside the value but here the key is we need id colon color okay so now you see if I console log this um, this key we should be able to see it I'm going to comment these other things so now every time I click delete it's going just to log the key okay okay that's good so we're looking for this key inside the local storage so local storage dot get item key okay and yeah we're just going to do yeah remove item key let's do this here's my application let's go on the last one and let's see if it deletes yep it does perfect this one yep it does okay we're good now we just have to uncomment these things good console log remove it and I think we're good uh, here's our cart import create cart show items in page yeah and I guess we're good let total price we're going to remove it show items in cart yeah remove this okay okay it seems to me that we're good uh, this also this create cart it could be a little bit nicer um, 
I don't like this. Um, yeah, I don't like this loop. I'm going to call it. Uh, um, const uh, local storage oh yeah no uh we could do uh object dot keys maybe let me see if we go there object dot keys of um local storage yep okay we have everything here so maybe we could do uh const key of object dot keys local storage so then we we don't need this key here uh, const sofa equals local storage dot get item key cart dot push json dot parse sofa okay that's fine mm -hmm. Okay, looks good to me. What else could we do? Uh, yeah, we could also make sure that this button is not going to be activated if uh, all of this, if any of this is empty. So let's look at this. Could we make it disabled? I think. Uh, nope. Disabled is not going to move. Mm. What we could do is when you click it, um, if any fields are empty, it's going to say, please fill in the field. Yeah, we could do that. So when you order, okay, where's the order button? Listen to order button here. Document dot, okay. Are all fields valid? Is fields at every check input? If not all fields are valid, then return. And we could also say um, const are all fields, um, let's say, are any fields empty? Is going to be fields.sum. Uh, fields verify field dot value is equal to uh, nothing. So if are any fields empty, uh, um, oh yeah, but we only want the one field. Okay, let's do something. Uh, we're going to refactor it. Okay, later. Oh yeah. Okay. Alert. Please fill all fields. Yeah, that's good. And uh, and return. So nothing happens. Okay. Yeah, that's good. So if I do this, please fill out this field. Wait. Oh, that's funny. I didn't. Okay. That's funny. I hadn't. Seems to me. Wait. If I remove this. I think should it does it still work? Ah, okay. It was still uh okay. Well, I didn't need it after all. Great. Great. So I think we're fine this way. Took a little bit of time, but now our code I think it's much nicer. You know, when you see this show items in page, you understand what it does. You see? For every sofa, create an article, offend a child, make a delete function, listen to quantity change, render the item quantity, update the total price, update the total quantity. And yeah, looks, uh, and we have smaller functions, which are easier to understand. For me, this is better code. So good luck.